Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It's Roland here from Think Brainwave, and I'm your tutor. So have a look at this. We'll be talking about cost. If you haven't heard about it before, I mentioned it in the previous video, but now we're going to do it properly and explain everything from scratch. The cost diagram is actually of paramount importance when you get further into trigonometry in grade 11 and grade 12. The cost diagram shows you where angles will be positive and where angles will be negative. It also explains to you how angles rotate around the axes and how they react to sine, cos, and tan. It's very important that you get this sort of understanding down pat because it helps you to grow and uh, develop your knowledge with regards to trigonometry. If you're thinking about taking this into university and maybe you want to do engineering maths, it's going to be very important and actually imperative that you understand the caste system. So the caste system works as follows. You have the bottom right being for all cos values, the angle will most certainly be positive at the bottom right there. Then you have A, which is all angles are positive in the top right hand quadrant. You then have sine, which is the all sine values are positive in the top left hand quadrant. And then you have the tan values in bottom left being positive. So I've just repeated it over here so that if you ever want to download the notes, you can do so at thinkbrainweb.com. We host everything there from notes to all of these videos as well as tests. So I've just done it in blue so you can see that all cos values will be positive down bottom right. And any values from sine, cos and tan will all be positive in the top right hand quadrant. You then use green for sine, which is the top left-hand quadrant. The top left-hand is actually classified as the second quadrant. The top right is classified as the first. So you get first top right, second top left, third bottom left, and fourth bottom right. So if ever the test is referring to a particular number, sort of quadrant-wise, you'll know exactly which one to look at. You then look at tan bottom left. Any tan angles are actually positive in the bottom left-hand quadrant. This has a lot to do with the Pythagorean sort of theorem, where you're looking at your x's, your y's, and your r's. So if I can just explain it, if you're looking at an angle in the bottom left-hand corner, you're looking at tan, which is the, so if I can start off by saying shade your rear, cause tan, cause x rays tan your exterior, you have tan your exterior y over x, you've got y going negative, and you've got your x going negative, so y is going down, x is going to the left, and the negatives, when put upon, basically in the numerator and the denominator, the negatives will cancel each other out, making a positive angle. However, if you use sine, you'd get a negative answer because you'd say sine would be shade your rear, so y over r. Your, your y would be down, and your, your r is always positive, so you'd have a negative answer in the bottom left. Now, as I've shown you, quadrant one is top right, two top left, three bottom left, and four bottom right. We also need to see that you've got zero degrees at the far right hand side. It goes left to 90 degrees, and that's pretty self-explanatory. It goes further on to 180 degrees. And if you watch the previous video, it might have been somewhat confusing because you might not have realized that the purple angle that I drew from the right hand side of the y-axis to the left hand side of the y-axis was 180 degrees. So if you are following these videos, it's a very good thing to continue watching them because I'm constantly building upon the knowledge from previous videos. Right, from 180, it goes another 90 degrees to 270 degrees at the bottom. And from 270 degrees, it continues upwards to 360. Now you may be asking yourself, why is it zero degrees and 360 degrees? Well, it's simple really. If you have a circle that starts from the right hand side of the y-axis and it rotates about 90 degrees it hits the 90 degree axis which is the y-axis it then continues another 90 to the 180 degree axis which is the x-axis a further 90 gets you to 270 which is the negative portion of the y-axis and another 90 degrees gets you back to where you started add all of those 90 degrees together and what do you get Voila, you get 360 degrees. Fantastic. Easy game. 